Amen. And it shall come to pass that before they call, before they call, before they call, I will answer. He knows what's in our heart. He knows our desire. He knows our petition. Even before we open our mouth, he said, I'm ready. Go on talking. I'm going to answer your prayer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. While they are yet speaking, it will hear. Now we come to point uh, number two. In point number two is that they like some praise for divine revelation. They like some praise for divine revelation. We're well, looking at Daniel chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 20 here. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 20, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. He didn't rush out because, you know, some people then in haste in a hurry will be looking. Nobody has got this answer. And then we we'll pray to the Lord and the Lord gave us uh, this answer and uh, Nebuchadnezzar is waiting impatiently he wants the answer now why are we going to hurry no other person has uh, this secret and this is what the Lord has specially revealed with divine favor and so will not rush out will give glory to God will praise the name of the Lord will we'll shout his praise because of what he has done and it says and Daniel uh, answered and said blessed be the name of God God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. Verse 21. In verse 21, and he changes times and see and the seasons. He removes kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Verse 22. In verse 22, he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and uh, he and the light dwelleth within. Verse 23. In verse 23, thank, uh, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given the wisdom and might, and has, uh, who has given me wisdom and might, and he, you have made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou as now made known unto us the king's matter. We're dividing this three parts. Number one, perpetual praise to God for his wisdom and might. Number two, present praise to God for his will and uh, over mankind. And number three, personal praise to God for his gift and wisdom a, a gift of wisdom and might number one is the perpetual per, perpetual praise to god that every time every time perpetually we're praising god for his wisdom and for his might in uh, daniel chapter 2 again verse 20 it said daniel answered and said blessed be the name of god forever and ever from generation to generation. What that's why it's perpetual for wisdom and might are his. In first Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 56. This is the reason why we're praising God. This is the reason why you ought to praise God. Because he makes a promise. And then he fulfills the promise. Says, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised according to all that he promised no one has failed it says there has not there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant he said because God fails not 
and he fulfills his promise all the promises he has made and the one we're claiming now and the one we're standing on now is fulfilling that as well he has not disappointed the people who came before us and the people of the present day is not going to disappoint anyone and also the coming the, uh, the people of the next generation is still going to bless them because of that perpetually we are praising the Lord look at number two here number two here of its uh, present praise to God for his will over mankind his will over mankind it tells us in Daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 21 and it changes the times and the seasons and he removeth kings and setteth up kings that is all the kings who are reigning all the kings who are ruling those who ruled in the past even Nebuchadnezzar he placed him there even Belshazzar he placed him even Darius he placed him even Cyrus he placed him there God says is the one in charge and is in control over mankind. So that's why the children of God are not perplexed and they are not, their hearts are not palpitating and their lives are not up and down and they are not bothered about this is going to happen. Who will be there? Who will be there? The man of God's choice will be there. No worry in your heart. No anxiety in your heart. This is happening now because of that. That's what they say. That's happening now because of that. And then people are wondering, how shall we send our children to school if this person comes in? How shall we have enough to eat if this person comes in? How shall we practice our faith if this one comes in? God is in charge. In our country here, God is in charge. In all the continent of Africa, God is in charge. That's why you are calm. Don't get into discussion with those who do not know God. Don't stand on the street corner discussing with the people that do not know that God is overall over the whole of mankind. And don't be arguing in your home. You're eating, and then somebody brings up, look at this, look at this, and it's within one month now this will happen, that will happen. Why don't you enjoy your food and leave all that in the hands of God? And God will do the best for our country. Because it says, He changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings, He does, and setteth up kings, He does, to give, He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding look at jeremiah we're looking at uh, jeremiah chapter 27 and we're looking at verse 5 jeremiah chapter 27 reading from verse 5 i have made the earth the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and i have given it to whom it seemed meet unto me he said is the one that does that he said i created the earth and all the nations of the earth and your country and my country our country that he created everything and then it says and i have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. So we're not going to have any sleepless night. Who will be there? Who will be there? When he comes, well, we know. No sleepless night. No anxiety. And no discussion that will jolt us. we believers in God. And God has said he will give it to whosoever seems right unto him. He will do it. We're looking at Psalm 75. And we're reading from verse 6. In Psalm 75, verse 6, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, but God 
is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Amen. We're coming to number three here. Number three, we're looking at personal praise to God for his gift of wisdom and might. In Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 22, Daniel chapter 2, we're looking at verse 22, he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. In verse 23, it says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee and for thou has now made known unto us the king's matters. Daniel praised the Lord and his friends praised the Lord with him because God, God alone, that could reveal secrets and could give wisdom and might to anyone, he has revealed the secret unto them. And when it comes to your turn, that you know a secret that the philosophers of the world, the coaches in the world, and the trainers of the world, and the investigators of the world could not reveal unto you. And then you go to God, everything belongs to him. Wisdom, might, secrets, all belong to him. He will reveal unto you. No secret will perplex your life. No secret will give you high blood pressure. That you are and sleepless nights. That you are just there on the bed. You cannot sleep because there is something you don't know. You are wondering about something. How will this affect my life and my family? Rest your mind. He reveal that secret to you. We're looking at Psalm 119 verse 164. Psalm 119, verse 164, it says, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. And then in verse 165, great peace of day which love thy love, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing will jolt you. Nothing will confuse you. Nothing will embarrass you because your mind is stayed on him. And great peace of day which love thy law. And nothing, nothing, and nothing shall offend them. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 25. Matthew 11, verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes, babes in Christ, new uh, children, newborn children in Christ. In your simplicity of mind, you know God is your father now, and he has all the secrets in his hand. And when you ask him, he will reveal these things unto babes in Jesus' name. And look at verse 26 there. In verse 26, even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Verse 27, verse 27 says, says, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save except the Son, and he to whom whomsoever the Son will reveal him. I pray that when your time comes, there will be no embarrassing silence from heaven in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. You know, when you think you know something, 
And then you now come to the person that had the dream originally. And you are to appear before him, and you come, and you look at his face. He's still a little bit angry, and he's still wondering, Daniel, you have come. Can you tell me the district? Do you know for a certainty that you have the secret if you didn't know who your God is? If you didn't know the revelation of the Heavenly Father? If you didn't have the assurance of faith, you'll be jolted a little, but not Daniel. No doubtful reservation. Everything that he had heard, that he had known, he knew. This is the truth. Dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 24. In Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 24, Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy, to kill, to slay, the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. If your life could be a source of preservation to other people, those who should have died, those who should have perished, your life, your knowledge, your wisdom, your vision, your passion brings life unto them. Those who are under the fear of death, and a fear of death because of sickness, or fear of death because of the harassment of the devil, or fear of death because of a secret decree against their lives. And then you as a believer saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can come and your life could become a preservative for the people that should have died. I pray the Lord will so use your life. He said, destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, number one is the fearless Daniel before the frightened warrior king. Number two is the faithful declaration of future worsening kingdoms. Number three is the firm decree of the foremost wise king, the king of heaven. We're looking at number one. Number one is the fearless Daniel before the frightened warrior king. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 again and we're reading from verse 25 now. In verse 25 it says, Then Ariel brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, unto the king, I have found a man. I have found a man. I have found a man. I pray at a time when the world has confusion, when your world has confusion, and when uh, the people around you, when they are perplexed because they do not have solution to the problems confronting them, I pray they will find you that you can supply the answer. When you're looking for a woman, that a woman of God that can do this, I pray they will find you in Jesus' name. I have found a man of the captives of Judah. Don't worry about what they say, you know, captive of Judah, unemployed person, somebody from that unknown tribe, somebody from that port. Don't worry about that. It is what you have that will bring you before the king. And it is what you know that will bring you before the king. Who is that? Who is that? Well, is that lowly fellow there? Is that an educated person there? Don't worry about that. It is what you have. It is what you know that will bring you before the king. Once you have the solution, the solution to the problems of this life, what where you came from and your stature and all, whatever, all that will not matter. I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. We're looking at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Art thou able 
to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Daniel, are you sure you have the solution to this problem? A national problem. Are you sure you have solution to this a problem that perplexed everybody? That even me, that I had the dream I had forgotten. Are you sure that you are able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Verse 27, in verse 27, then Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men and the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers show unto the king. Look at uh, chapter 21 of uh, Luke. Luke chapter 21, we're reading from verse 24. In Luke 21, 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What's the relationship of that? What, what we're learning. The dream is about the kingdoms of the Gentile world. And those uh, Gentile worlds, they rule, another one will come, another one will come, another one will come until the times of the Gentiles be over. And so this dream actually stretches between from the time of Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon, an empire, an emperor, and then it goes on to the Middle Persian Empire, that is another kingdom that will fall, and then the Grecian Empire will rise up, that will fall until the time of the Romans. And all those kingdoms, four of them, all those kingdoms, one after the other, all those kingdoms in a large expanse from that time before Christ came until Christ came and until the second coming when it will thrash and crush and destroy all those kingdoms and then the stone will become a mighty mountain all over the world that Jesus will be the king of kings and the king and the lord of lords and the king of the whole universe. That's the dream and that's how it spanned such a large period until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And yet, Daniel came in without any fear, without any timidity and without any fright at all and without any doubt what if i miss it look at acts chapter 18 and i'm reading from verse 9 acts chapter 18 verse 9 then speak the lord to paul in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace the lord had sent him with the message of the gospel to the gentile world and when he was at Corinth and appeared that you know things were rough the Lord assured him be not afraid the same thing the Lord is saying to us anyway he sends us and whatever he sends us to do whatever we see the sight that dazzle and the things that might even torment the heart of the average man or average woman the Lord is saying be not afraid I'm backing you up I sent you and I told you to proclaim the watch of the gospel to the people you are meeting. Be not afraid, but speak. Speak loud. Speak convincingly. Speak from all your heart and hold not thy peace. In verse 10, verse 10 says, for I am with thee. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee. Amen. When you know that, you'll go to your office confidently. When you know that, you'll live in your community confidently. When you know that, you will preach the gospel without fear 
and without fright anytime anywhere because it says i have much people in this city then in verse 11 in verse 11 and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of god among them we're looking at number two here number two here is a faithful declaration on future worsening kingdoms now he's going to tell the dream and the dream is going to tell about the kingdoms of the earth from one to the other from the other to the next one from the next one to the final one before christ will come and this is about the kingdoms of the world that will be going from bad to worse and worse to worse and worse to the worst it tells us in daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 28 daniel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 28 but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets do not be afraid or ashamed to declare that, that a God exists anywhere you are and you know because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth whether they are Jews or Gentiles do not be ashamed and here uh, Daniel was not ashamed he said but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. The dream was not just for the days, for the time, for the period when Nebuchadnezzar was alive. It will be for the latter days, the dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these look at verse 29 in verse 29 as for thee o king thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed now daniel is revealing even the thoughts that nebuchadnezzar had before the dream came he said nebuchadnezzar you must remember when you were to sleep, you were thinking in your heart, what shall be after you have left? Because you are going to leave. Although the magicians and astrologers are saying, King, live forever, you and I know that you are going to depart. And the, the thought came to your mind, what shall come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass in verse 30 in verse 30 it tells us but as for me this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that i have more than any living but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king and that thou mightest know the thoughts of your heart. He said, that's the reason why. Now, the confidence that Daniel had, the declaration that Daniel made fearlessly, courageously, without being afraid of Nebuchadnezzar, of Ariok, of any other uh, uh, Chaldean, that's the kind of courage he wants us to have. That's the kind of mind he wants us to have when he sends us to declare what will come upon people now and also in the future. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, unto me, Jeremiah, and unto you as well. The Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Then in verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, be not afraid of their faces because you think their faces show their mind their faces reflect the 
the thoughts they have. Their faces will show you what they are planning, what they are thinking, and if they are going to hurt you or harm you, you'll see it on their faces, except they train themselves not to show it on their face. And so, uh, uh, Jeremiah, don't be afraid, do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. In verse 9, it says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And then in verse 10, it says, See, I have this day said thee, over the nations and over the kingdoms and to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. He doesn't want us to be, you know, we're shivering and shaking and timid and fearful and frightened before the people he sends us to. God loves them. And he sends us a message of love that will save their soul, that will deliver them from eternal death, that they will not perish. And if you carry such a wonderful message, a life-saving message, a soul-saving message, and you love the people you are speaking to, then you and God has assured you that he is sending you. He put his word in your mouth. You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Look at verse 6. Even in that situation, in verse 6, it says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. When you put the people in remembrance, this is what God has said. This is what is happening now. Everything is according to his word. This is prophecy being fulfilled. And you remind them that Christ is about to come. And everyone that is not saved or backsliding shall come back and be saved. And everyone that is saved and is not a living a consistent holy life and without holiness no man shall save the Lord. You encourage them and you pray with them and you counsel them that whatever challenges in their lives not making them to show that consistent life of Christian faith and salvation you root that out of their lives and you lead them to real repentance and restoration and you lead them to that sanctification that without holiness no man shall say the Lord and then you let them seek the power of God that will strengthen them, embolden them encourage them, empower them. That's what the Lord is calling us to. And we do that without any fear. And we do that without, uh, you know, shaking or uh, whatever before anyone. It says you put the brethren in remembrance of this thing. Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast ordained, uh, attained. It says in verse 16, uh, in verse 16, take heed unto thyself. Don't be timid. Take heed unto thyself. Live courageously. Live with conviction and live without compromise. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear the amen. Look at number three here. Number three now, we're looking at the uh, firm decree of the most foremost wise king. That's God. We're talking about God is foremost, is the highest, is eternal, and is uh, when one kingdom passes away, he still remains there. And when one king dies, and changes, and God changes him, and he setteth up another, God is still there. And when one powerful emperor, powerful man, 
powerful king when he's deposed when he is pushed aside another one comes god is still at the same god at the time of uh, Pharaoh, the same God at the time of the Assyrian king Sennacherib, at the same God at the time of Nebuchadnezzar, the same God at the time of Herod, is still the same God on the throne. They come, they go. They come, they perish. They come, they are dethroned. They come, they are driven away. But God remains the same. He is the foremost wise God. And he has his own decree too. And when he makes his own decree, the decree of the eternal God will stand. We're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 30. Daniel chapter 2, verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes... That shall make known the interpretation to the king that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. In Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. It says in verse 17, it tells us this matter is by the decree of the watches of the watchers and that and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high the most high god in heaven ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth aid to whomsoever he will you see that the god of heaven the most high rulers in the kingdoms of men and he giveth the kingdoms to whomsoever he will and setteth over each even the people like look like the basest of men look at verse 24 in verse 24 it says this is the interpretation O king and this is the decree of the most high which is come upon my lord the king god is the one that rules and whoever he puts there is still in charge and he has a decree that supersedes that goes beyond the decree of any man in proverbs chapter 8 reading from verse 29 proverbs chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 29. When he gave to the sea, here is Christ talking. And he said, when the Father, the Almighty, the ancient of days, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then in verse 30, he says, Then I was by him. And then he says, As one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Psalm 2, we're looking at verse 6. In Psalm 2, looking at verse 6, he says, Yet I have said, my king upon my holy hill of zion that's the almighty saying he has the final say he has the final word about the dominions and the kingdoms of this world and he says i sent my i set my king that's his only begotten son yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion look at verse 7 it says in verse 7 i will declare the decree he has the final decree on any life on any king on any community 
on any nation. He has the final decree upon the kingdoms of this world. Nebuchadnezzar does not, did not have the final decree. There is another decree, the decree of the Almighty God that supersedes every other decree on earth. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the Gentiles, for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Then in verse 9, in verse 9 he said, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, because all judgment has been given to the hand of the Son of God, and shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in verse 10, he said, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be wise now, O ye emperors. Be wise now, O ye rulers. Because there is one that is higher than the highest. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, serve the Lord with fear. That is your fear. If you don't come to the Lord and seek the Lord, now if you perish, if you die in a condition of your sinfulness, even though you are a king, even though you are an emperor, even though you are a ruler, where will you spend eternity? Serve the Lord. Come and repent. Come and seek the Lord and have salvation and remain and abide in that grace of God in salvation. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And then in verse 12, it says, kiss the son, befriend the son, make him your friend, and let all the wall of demarcation between you and the son, the savior, your substitute, and the redeemer. Let everything, the wall of demarcation be broken down and befriend him. Let him say, you are my friend because I have called you, I have chosen you, and I have washed your sin, and I have made you a new creature now in Christ. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. You put your trust in him, in Christ, the Son of God, to be your Savior. You put your trust in him so that he can be your sanctifier. You put your trust in him so that he can empower you. And that power will make you to stand. And then you'll be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. And his nature will come into you. And because his nature comes into you, you will live the life that glorifies God. The life that when time is ending, dead here for you, for us, and for the world in the rapture of the resurrection you'll go with the Lord in Jesus name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer let's stand up, talk to the Lord in prayer and forget every other thing around you and forget you know whatever it is, anything there, anything there, forget everything and call upon the name of the Lord. We've learned so much today and we need to take all that to the Lord so that his strength will be in us his power will be in us and the assurance and the fearlessness and the courage and the conviction will be in us. Look at Daniel. Why can't you be another Daniel today? Talk to the Lord in prayer and say, oh Lord, here am I. I have heard about the unforgettable Daniel. I want to so live my life that I too, by the grace of God in the strength of the Lord and with the real salvation I have, I will live an unforgettable life. It starts with salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. That same change you made in Daniel and that same transformation you made in Daniel and that same courage you gave Daniel and that same conviction you gave Daniel, I want to so live the life that I'll fear nothing on earth and even the Kadnesah with a frown, with his fury and uh, with his uh, fire and fiery nature. Lord, give me the heart that will live for you unforgettable, 
unforgettable. Anywhere that I find myself in my community, I'll so have the truth penetrating my life, saturating my life, and keeping me to stand firm on the truth. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and tell him, oh Lord, here am I. Pray a decisive prayer. A decisive prayer between you and the Lord, telling the Lord, oh Lord, I want to have that kind of life that is firm, fearless, focused, living for your glory. Tell him, and he will do it in your life. That your life to your neighbors, your life to your community, your life, anywhere, everywhere will be unforgettable. They'll know you are a child of God. They'll know you have the grace of God in you. They'll know that that grace of God in you teaches you to deny ungodliness and to deny all worldly lusts and then to live a righteous life. A godly life, a sober life. Tell the Lord, let the light of the gospel so shine in your life that everyone around you beholding you will know you are being of the Lord Jesus. That you are a new creature in Christ, that old things have passed away, and that all things have become new. And if you have friends, prayer partners, let them be people of this like precious faith. Let them be people who are not pretenders, who are not hypocrites. Let them be people who love the Lord like you love the Lord, who are committed to the Lord like you are committed to the Lord, who are consecrated to the Lord completely with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. Let them be people who have the same understanding and the same deep commitment as you have unto the Lord. Let us say how Daniel surrounded himself with people of like precious faith. Who are your friends? Are they people that easily give up? They can't endure a little persecution. They can't endure a little trial. They can't endure a passing decree. And they are shaking. And they, can't, they don't have the same faith you have in the promises of God. Are those your friends? Why don't you say, Lord, help me. Give me friends that have the same like precious faith. Friends that to stand where we ought to stand on the promises of God. Friends that have more of heaven than the earth in their lives. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord that you'll be able to have the common faith when you make petition before the Lord and then you pray with confidence any challenge, two of you shall agree together with confidence. Any problem, common problem you're trying to solve, and you pray with confidence. Confidence in the Lord that I know, I know, I know that God will answer. And you have common confidence, the same confidence in the promises of God. That while they are yet speaking, I will answer. And before they finish making their petition, I give them the solution. And you have that confidence yourself. And then you surround yourself with the people that have the same, the same confidence. The people that have a different doctrine, a different interpretation, a different lifestyle a backsliding lifestyle, a compromising lifestyle. No, the people that hold on to this world and they say, come watch me. Here is where I stand and I stand with you. <clears throat> they stand with you, tell the Lord. And when God answers prayer. Then you come with praise. Praise before the perpetual praise. You're always praising the Lord. You're never grumbling. 
never complaining why did god bring me to this situation morning noon and night you are praising the lord the answer has come you are praising the lord the jericho walls are still up you are praising the lord the night in the dungeon midnight with paul and silas you are praising the lord and it's the praise of god in your mouth perpetually that will grant you that miraculous answer that you are seeking present time praise the lord hold up praise the lord traffic jam praise the lord on the long queue sweating in your car praising the lord at all times in all things at all places in every situation when the people of the world are talking negative and they're talking divergent things you have your mouth filled with the praises of the lord personal personal praise personal praise praising the lord in a personal way that man said seven days seven times in the day i praise your name and pray unto you every other hour just remember the lord he is in charge he is in charge he is in charge nebuchadnezzar not taking the power away from the most high god god is still in charge praise him all the time and when you are before the people of this world the fearless bold courageous don't think of man more than you think of god think of god meditate on god lean on god rely on god whatever is happening if that thing is not of god it will soon pass away any decree for many earthly king nothing will pass away is the decree of the king of kings the decree of the lord of lords that will stand forever and ever Don't be afraid of any situation caused by man, planned by man, affected by man. He is man. She is just a woman. The king of heaven that has the final decree. And that final decree says you will live. That final decree says no man shall lay any hand on you to hurt you. That final decree, the decree of God says, he'll give you a long life until you finish the calling he has given you. The decree of the foremost wise king is wise he knows what you need he knows the direction of your life he knows the calling upon your life and has made a decree for the son his only begotten son and for you son of god daughter of god He'll do good in your life. Think of that. Meditate on that. He will see you through. Daniel lived all the days of Nebuchadnezzar. 